the cloud. There we go. Okay. Go ahead, Lisa. Okay. Um, wait, I just want to get rid of this blurb. Uh, there. Okay. Let me ask you, everyone, how many of you have been into New York to see the Alice Neal show at the Met? I have. Linda. You did? Yeah. Uh, I haven't been in yet. I'm hoping to get in this weekend. I'm not a good driver in the city, so I just have to see how I feel about trains. But it's an ex from what I've heard, it's an extraordinary exhibit. And she had an extraordinary life. So she was born in yes. 1900, and she died in 1984. So obviously, she was 84 years old. And she really, really worked right up to the end of her life. She had a very, very turbulent life, a fascinating life. Jason, as you said, she was something. She was really something. Um, <clears throat> so for those of you who were here for the other portrait lectures that I did, like Amy Sherald and uh, Romero Bearden, she's another obviously portrait artist with an incredible, incredible style. I mean, I really love her. So, okay, this is a picture of her towards the end of her life. And she's obviously quite happy. And um, she's very, very interesting in that she uh, did her portraits all through the period of abstract expressionism. She never varied her style. So um, we can move along and we can start going into this. So there she is, you know, towards the end of her life, having a good old time. And then, um, okay, this is her as a young woman. Now you have to understand, she was born in 1900 in rural Pennsylvania, and it was a stifling existence, apparently. Um, very narrow-minded, very repressed, I mean, just, hard for her to exist in that lifestyle. Um, the thing is, though, is that even though there was a lot of uh, rigidity to everything, her parents were kind of quirky. Her father um, was an accountant with the Pennsylvania Railroad, but he came from a family of opera singers, okay? And her mother, Alice Hartley, you will hear the name Hart mentioned a lot. She was one of the uh, original uh, relatives of these uh, descendants who signed the Declaration of Independence. And she did not really, really approve of Alice's work. As she said, I don't know what you expect to do in the world. You're only a girl. So despite that, if we want to move on um, to another picture. OK, let's start with this here. Despite that. She saved um, her own money and she managed to get um, um, uh, scholarships and she enrolled in the, sorry, um, Academy of Art, the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Okay, I mean, she was down in that area, but she was not encouraged at all. And she just, you know, entered this world painting. And here in this place <clears throat> in 1924, she met her future husband and she fell in love with a wealthy Cuban in the program and his name was Carlos Enriquez, okay? Marriage to him was devastating, okay? So let me just talk about this one slide uh, quickly. Okay, it is done, was done in 1930 it's kind of scary, don't we think? Right. And it's, it's, it's called Ethel Anston. And the thing is, his face, if you notice the use of color in his face, he, she only painted in oil, by the way. Everything is very white and mask-like. And then look at his ears. Very much an exaggerated figure. The hand is huge, all right? But... It's, it's rather ghostly. Do you not agree? A little scary. So why don't we move on to the next one then? If we could, Jason. Okay, I love this one. This is Alenka, done in 1936. And you can start to see the beginnings of her style. Um, you know, she really, really 
goes into the face and really gives you great character. As a very famous art critic once said, she shows psychic depth in her portraits. So they're not necessarily pretty little pictures, but they're fascinating, okay? So anyway, um, so the couple, once they met, they married in 1925. Um, and they moved to Havana, Cuba, okay? The following year, she had her first small exhibition and her first child was also born and uh, Santeria. And she died as an infant from dith uh, diphtheria and it was just devastating to her and her, a lot of her work was put on hold. Let's move on to the next one, please. Okay, this is Ethel Ashton. Um, done in 1930. It's an earlier portrait. Look at the difference between the two that I just showed you. I feel there's almost like an impressionistic feeling to this. It's like Renoir with the rosy cheeks and the, you know, the fabric and the background is very, very vivid compared to the last one that I showed you. So it's interesting. I mean, this woman had incredible talent, but she found her own style pretty quickly in life. So we can move on to the next one, if that's okay. This is called T.B. Harlem in 1940. And it's, it's a tragic person dying of T.B. Okay, during this time, before this happened, um, they did have another child, um, Isabetta, and her husband just left with the daughter who she was only able to see three times in her life. And she um, had a major nervous breakdown, Alice Neal. And um, um, she was left in the city and she tried to find him. But in the meantime, from 1931 to 1940, her life was very, very turbulent. She had crazy relationships with people and the thing is, she eventually moved up to Harlem and she really loved the atmosphere here. As you, I mean, this is a sad, sad picture. I mean, as long as going, but um, she loved to paint street life, portraits of people who lived in the area. And she was very, in her own strange way, focused on family. And you will see as we go ahead. So um, if we go on to the next, okay, here are children. It's called um, The Puerto Rican Boys, done in 1956. Now, are these not soulful? Look at, I mean, you feel like you know them. Look how she captures their face. And the two faces are so, so different. I mean, the guy in the green shirt looks, I would say, a little tough. The one behind him has a very wistful sort of pleading look okay notice the rendering of the hands the clothes and the faces and how she chooses her background for art does anybody have any comments on this you're all good it's, it's was she, yeah was she well known before this exhibit because her art is really exquisite i know um she we're jumping ahead a little i mean she had one exhibit before she had her breakdown and then um, towards the end of her life, she really was well known. So I'll tell you about her life in a second. Okay, okay sure, thank you. I'm sorry, Doris. Now, I was just gonna say, during this time from 1931 to 1940, her partners ranged from a nightclub entertainer to a Marxist intellectual. Um, they were often subjects of her work. And she, is all, she also had a lover drug addicted um, Kenneth Doolittle, who threw and destroyed 300 of her 50 paintings and sketches in some kind of psychotic episode. So um, none of that work was ever documented. And she was a prolific painter. So again, let's move on to another portrait, please. I love this one. This one is called Dog Drawing, and it was done in 1955. I wanted to include this because here you can almost see the bones of her work. She can really draw, okay? 
I mean, she knows anatomy. What was once the Pennsylvania um, School of Art is no, now known as um, the more uh, the more art school, and it still exists. And it's a very very traditional school that really educates you in a very classical style. And you can see this. I mean, everything is terrific in this particular dog. You know this dog. And I think it's a beautiful, beautiful drawing. So it's not only were her paintings great, the base was great, okay? She really had an amazing um, foundation. So let's move on to the next one, please. Okay, I love this one. I had to put it in, it's a little drawing. It's called Dorothy with a Banana, done in 1955. Okay, you can see her signature in the lower corner. Um, you know, it's a, it's just, first of all, I find the subject matter really hilarious. I'm mean, Dorothy with a banana. Look at her face. Look at her face. She's incredible what she could do. And again, this is all the aftermath of, you know, a terrible breakdown, being hospitalized, losing a daughter, not seeing her other daughter and her husband leaving her. So, she was, she persevered though. She managed to build a life. And I'll tell you about that in a second. Let me just tell you, can we move on to the next uh, picture? Okay, I love this. This is one of my favorites, okay? This is called, where am I looking for it? Uh, the Dominican Boys of West 108th Street. So you know, she was up, living up way up West. Um, she probably was somewhat of an outsider, though people began to really love her up there because, you know, her paintings and stuff like that. But as they say, everything in her art counts. She could capture any kind of mood and feeling, whether people were naked, hairy, voluptuous, childlike, arrogant, anything. She painted out uptown sophisticates. She painted trouble artists. Um, she painted the very, very old and, and she painted the young on the streets. Some people feel that they had a um, wireistic quality to them. Linda, did you feel that way when you were at the exhibit? A uh, which quality? A voyeur. Voy I can't Oh, remember. yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I was just thinking of that horrible one that she did of that that guy who uh, was so full of himself with all the uh, penises. Did yeah. you do that? I didn't <laughs> do you know that one? one? I didn't put that one. But no, I mean, she really didn't miss a beat. I mean, again, look at these children. I mean, they're so incredible. What's so interesting, though, is up on West 108th Street, which is near Columbia. Just check out the two people. Somebody's carrying a violin or some kind of instrument of sorts. And the thing that she loved about Harlem was the culture, the music, the people, the emotion, just absolutely everything. So at the same time, let's move on to the next one, please. Okay. She also would do things like this, which is like, it's almost um, amateur-like compared to the last thing. I mean, look at this. This is called um, Sunset. Sun, well, Riverside Drive, done in 1957. After seeing such sophisticated portraits, is there not something kind of, I mean, the sun looks like an egg and a yolk. It's uh -huh. Very, very primitive. Looks like an egg, like a yeah. egg. It's very interesting. So I'm going to interject this, some of these other things that she did on the site. I mean, from that spectacular dog drawing, to this, I don't want to be judgmental, but it's just really interesting to notice. So let's move on to our um, next one. Okay, this is Hartley. This is her son. She did have children. She went on to have children. Hartley was painted, let me just find this, um, in 1970. Here's where we really, really get into, look at the face. Look at the colors that are in the face. She puts in green, she puts in, puts in beiges, she puts in grays. She doesn't spare us from those eyes that are really, really powerful looking. Okay, and oh. I'm sorry? I, I just gorgeous. Isn't it? Isn't oh, it? Uh -huh. 
Look at the paint strokes on his arms. Now notice, this is, do we say it's an aggressive pose? I mean, he is all out there. You know, he's straddled, his arms are behind his head and he is staring at you, right? Look how she does the fabric in the pants. Quick strokes of oil, okay? But her choices of color are so amazing. And again, if you just look in his arms, you're seeing greens, you're seeing purples, up towards his hands, you're seeing grays. It's extraordinary. It's riveting. And she also, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, somebody said something? No, I was going to say, um, I'm trying to remember if all of her paintings, she has an outline of the, you know, the a subject. Lot do, yes, and a lot of them do. I think she does. I don't know that she did any that weren't like that, but I can't remember. A majority of them are. And that just adds to the condens, like the condensing of right. the portrait, you know, because if you look in the background, marvelous color choices, unfinished in places, it's not distracting. You look at him. Uh -huh. Okay, you, you just, he command, I just, look at the way he painted his t-shirt. I mean, she painted his t-shirt. So again, she did love family. At the same time, during the 30s through the 40s, she also dedicated a lot of her um, energy to government art projects, okay? And we'll talk about that in a second. If we can move on to the next one, please. Okay, she was also known for doing a series of pregnant women. There were seven that were particularly uh, spectacular. This particular one is called Pregnant Julie, okay? And um, this was done in 1967. There's a uh, pregnant Maria come up, coming up. You'll see a lot of them. Um, but again, it's unabashed. She is just lying there with her stomach She's completely nude. She's looking at you. She kind of looks tired. The circles under her eyes. Yes. Um, it's incredible. I mean, she confronts you with this subject. Pregnant women are not often, number one, pa painted unclothed. And again, just commanding your attention. And again, look at the color choices greens in skin, but it works, right? Poor Julie. Lisa? Yes? Lisa, it's Linda again. I'm Because I'm trying to remember from when I saw the show, and now I see this in this one. It, it seemed to me that several of the paintings she had, you know how we always put a speck of light in the eye? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, this one, and you'll see some later, mm -hmm. that there's no light. Yep. Like, because there's no light in their eye, it's like something is missing. Like, mm -hmm. like they're, um, they're not shining, you know, bright. Well, they're, they're inward. Yeah. They're but inward. She's really, she's really gazing. You can't read her particular. I mean, she looks a little shocked to me. I don't know how everybody else feels about her, but the white glint of her, that's a great point. We would have known so much about her. Yeah, and you'll notice in some of the other paintings, I think, because I was trying to remember that that's missing. And it, it paints a certain feeling about that person. Well, it's kind of disturbing. Yeah. He's looking right at you with no feeling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But um, she's a beautiful woman in her own way, okay? Now... Rarely do we see the fleshy pinks in this portrait, except her foot behind her leg, which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. So she could draw, she could paint. Let's go on to the next one, please. Okay, this is her most famous painting, okay? It is Andy Warhol, mm -hmm. You know, and it's really, really rather disturbing if, and I'm going to talk about it at length because it was just very, very important. This was painted in the 1970, okay? And 
it's very interesting what she did with him. And I'm going to show you some close-ups as well. He is stripped bare. It's showing, this is after he was shot. Okay, hence the stitching in his chest. Those are his famous scars. Okay, his body looks very vulnerable. He's wearing a sort of girdle, so to speak, to hold his stomach in. Okay, check out his shoes. Andy Warhol, it's very interesting. He started out as a shoe illustrator and went into fashion and then eventually went and did his thing with you know his cans and all of that. But I think the fact that his shoes, they're so pristine, she had to know something about him. Now his face, it's, I mean, it's him. His eyes are shut though. We have no contact with this person. Okay, and yet he's sitting there rather proudly and exposed. Notice the under, other thing, his chair, okay? It's very, very unfinished. It's almost like a, just a line sketch of paint. <clears throat> There's a little bit of color down around his feet, a little blue around his face, but I'm gonna show you some shots coming up later where we really can look into his face. And I mean, he was such a crazy looking person anyway, but she got him and people just, she's starting to climb into fame at this point, come the seventies, okay? But I have to tell you something interesting here. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, the fact that she went from life up into Spanish Harlem to Andy Warhol's factory and some of his gang there, it just shows how she moved throughout society. Because Andy Warhol's uh, factory was very, very decadent. Okay, so let's move on to the next, please. Okay. I cannot find the name of this. I don't believe it was in the exhibit. It was painted in 1967, but I had to put it in for several reasons. That mother, she's like Doris Day, right? Early Doris Day. And it's so 60s with the couch and the plant and, you know, the mother is so blonde and, you know, the pattern pants and there's a little boy. I mean, it's very, very interesting here because the little boy, I feel, tell me if you don't agree, I feel that you cannot read that child at all, but you can see something going on in the mother. And I'm looking to see trying to blow it up if there's any white glint in the eye. But none, whether there is or isn't, I mean, again, she's staring right at us. What do you think her face says? Protective. I'm sorry? Protective. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm staring out, don't you dare. This is mine. I also find her very spunky looking. Mm -hmm. Very, very spunky looking. A little defiant. Yes, exactly. So it's almost like one of those posed photographs, all right? But again, notice her keen knowledge of color, her shading, look at the drawing of the hand, which is so beautiful. God knows we've seen enough, um, done enough exhibits and artists and things to show how artists exaggerate hands or they tuck hands behind the back. These hands are right out there. She's very suburban looking, let's put it that way, right? Uh -huh. Okay, we can move on to the next one then, please. Can I just say something? I, sure. I was going to say that um, we said she's protective of him. However, you can't actually see her hand there. Her, hand, her, her left hand would be her left hand. She's not really holding him. Her left hand is behind him. Right. So, you, know, you wonder, he's sitting there, but where is she really protecting him? But notice his arm is on her lap. They're very close yeah, together. that's true. There's an intimacy. Yet they're both standing alone. You look at their faces. So it's a very interesting painting, I yeah. think. Okay, we can move on. I love this one, okay? It's an unfinished painting and it is called, hold on one second. Uh, ba 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 bum. Um, I will find it in one minute, excuse me. It is, oh, this is James Hunter. 
painted in 1967. I'm jumping around to show you. I usually go in a chronological order, but I'm jumping around to show you how her style has evolved. Okay, I think this is magnificent. I really do. I mean, to me, I don't know if any of you feel this way, but I feel like, like um, <clears throat> it's unfinished, it's deliberate, so you go into his face the tones of browns and blacks. I love the unfinished ear there. And do you feel that all your attention just goes right to his face or do you also feed into the painting drawing, so to speak? What do you all think? Face. Face, yeah. It's beautiful. I don't know if this was in the exhibit or not, but I just love it. Yes, I think it is. It's really incredible, you know? and. She how she has uh, such a skill in capturing bodies. Oh, yeah. Uh, her hands are really, ex I, I think they're exceptional. Yeah. And again, think of this from, as a rural woman in Pennsylvania. And everybody knows how vast and, you know, Pennsylvania is. She was in a tiny little town. She went to an art school. She was lucky enough to do that. And look, look what she produced. It's extraordinary. Okay, we can move on to the next one, please. Um, okay, this is, I'm sorry, this is the close-up of Andy Warhol, that portrait that you saw of him with his whole body. Again, let's examine the color in the face and his collarbones and his sagging breasts, you know? He, first of all, I have to say, he looks like he's here, but he's not here. It's like his eyes are shut. He's sitting there proudly enough, but he's not showing any expression I don't feel. And again, I think Andy Warhol personally was a very tortured looking person. And it really shows here. So what do you all think? You must have comments. I wonder what her motivation was to paint this kind of um, a portrait that is so tremendously revealing of him. Well, again, as, as I said in the beginning, you know, she spared nothing. Yeah. <laughs> if her subjects, and Andy Warhol spared nothing either. When you look at his films and all that kind of stuff, it sort of, it was what it was, okay? So um, if he was willing to do that, I'm sure she didn't have to bully him into any posing. Like, I'm sure he would just like, oh yeah. Yeah, sure. But... Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very disturbing painting but it's also very beautiful. I mean, when you look yes, at it. Yes, I, I couldn't agree more, but, but it shows him, uh, you know, not as his public persona. I actually saw him in the street and it, it had to have been in the 1980s because that's yeah. when I worked in Manhattan and mm -hmm. he looked a lot more together than this. Well, he yeah. looked a lot more like Andy Warhol. So I used she to... obviously knew a great deal about him. Right, I used to see him around a lot as he was slowly declining and, um, she has his likeness, though, incredibly, don't you think, Doris? Oh, yeah, sure. I mean, uh, and her use of color is simply breathtaking. I know. She seems right on the cutting edge, really. Very I don't know, other people doing this, um, I guess Matisse did portraits with greens in the face, but she really has quite a grasp of color. And again, remember, as I said, she was doing all of this stuff when abstract expression was the main art going on yeah. in American society. And, you know, that's non-representational and she stuck to her portraits. And I mean, it's incredible. Does anybody think he looks like he's in pain? Yeah. I yeah. think that's what yeah. I was thinking. Yep, yep. Psychic, psychic pain. Yes, exactly. Well, you said he was shot. So maybe yes. this is yeah. after. But also, if you if you know anything about his background and history, um, he uh, he was very very decadent. And when he was filming, or not that much painting, but his films, again, 
We think she spared nothing, he spared nothing. And in his factory, he had a group of people who just worshiped him. And they were all sort of self-destructive and you know, they were destroying themselves and he would just film them, nobody intervened. I mean, very dark stuff. So we can move around on to something else now. Okay, this is two people in Andy, uh, walk, uh, Andy Warhol's uh, factory. We have, uh, where did it go? Rita Red with the red hair and um, where did the other one? Jackie Curtis, okay? Now, obviously she is a transvestite, not so much with him, but let's look. I think Rita Red looks like David Bowie in his early stages, but um, just let's just start with the feet. Look how they're in incredibly done. And I want to point out one thing for artists, foreshortening is incredibly difficult to master. And when I mean foreshortening, sitting down, well, there's a lot of different examples of it, but here it's the body and the legs coming out, you, out at you. That is incredibly difficult to do, to get the correct depth and you know it, it's just incredible you know you pull out with your work and things get larger um this is somewhat distorted but uh look at the way she did their their legs and their jeans and everything I mean it's beautifully depicted as is look at his hand it's extraordinary and again we I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, she seems to always do um, a squat. I don't know what you what you call it, but her figures are always sort of um, short and wide. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what what is that called? Horizontal. I mean, her those little boys that she did. They're all pudgy, like um, yeah, sort of you know, slightly pulled like toffee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't know what that is called. I don't know if it was her style. You know, she does she does it a lot. Yes. It's very open, you know? Well, I think that there's probably a reason that sh she's also pulling out something else, showing us, showing her care, the um, people in that shape, that form, mm -hmm. I guess I want to say. It's not formal. That's one thing. Right. You know, it's not like a formal sitting by any means. No, it's so, like when you put the TV on and you put it on stretch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very, yeah. very true. I happen to love this one. Again, notice, as Linda, you pointed out, the black outline. But check this out, everybody. Rita Red's hand that's splayed an arm that's on her knee. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. It's almost like a cadaver. Roy, right? Yeah. I'm sorry? Shh. Oh. Anyway, do you see? I mean, there's such rich color pumped into the limbs and faces of these two. But look how white, white that arm is. Yeah. Coming out. Now, he, she was a scary guy. I think she certainly showed it in his, her face, but she really also capitalized. I mean, just with that arm and stuff, it's very death-like, right? Mm -hmm. Do we like it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I, think I, like, I like her stuff. I really do too. And her stuff is very haunting. And, you know, as I said, she spares nothing, but it doesn't, freak me out the way many other artists do when they decide to spare nothing, you know? There's something still relatable, I find. For example, look at that little red toenail in Rita Red's sandal. There's something endearing about it. Yeah. She's you know all I mean? in her stocking. It's interesting, yeah. <laughs> yes. She's wearing black stockings. And then her white arm is in front of it. Yep. But it just shows it's not a, a photograph, it's a painting. And she can exactly. do it once. Exactly. She was a true painter. She was a true, true painter. 
So, um, you know, she's called a realistic painter, but I can't say, I mean, when you think of realism, you don't think of this. Do you know what I mean? Right. So, um, okay, let's move on to the next one, please. Okay, now this is a killer. Okay, this is one of her son. Oh. <laughs> which I think is pretty incredible. And it is called, where did it go? Hang on a second. Uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. Richard in the area of corporation. Now, he's obviously in finance or some kind of corp, whoa, there goes my drink, some kind of corporate business. Um, I love the Coke bottle glasses. She's working with very traditional color, you know, with the suit and all of that. I love that the tie is just quick dry brush, but again, let's go to his hands and his face. How beautiful that hand is gripping the armchair. It's amazing. Yes, it's greenish tan and strange, not as much as this one, which the other hand that has a highlight on him. Um, I think it's so brilliant what she did with the leaving the white paint for shine in his hair. What do you think of this painting? It's interesting because he looks, he's very person, corporate like, very different than her background. Absolutely. And I think, you know, she's really pulling that corporate <laughs> differences out. Do we feel it's a mockery? Pardon me? Do we feel it's a mockery of him? A little bit, a little, yeah, <laughs> to me. Corporate. So where did this sun come from? You know? He also well, I'm sorry. This is this is not her son from the Cuban husband. Mm -mm. Oh, this son is I forget. Got a couple. If, of if there's a father. Yes, <laughs> father's around. But notice, what? notice, notice. Look at his eyes. He has that bead of light, and it adds something to his face. Mm -hmm. I feel he looks kind of beady eyed and furtive, a little sneaky. Does anybody agree or not? Mm -hmm. So I think it's very, very interesting. <laughs> What's that? He looks corporate. <laughs> and it's a double portrait. Nobody said it's a... True. A, but I think, and you can see his reflection from a mirror in the back. Yeah. And that reflection is very interesting because it sort of looks like his head is opened up. Huh. But anyway, all right, let's move on to the next one, please. This is one of my favorite, okay? This one is called, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly, painted in 1975, the DeVay twins, all right? Now, are any of you um, acquainted with the photography of Diane Arbus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really, really strange. Is it not similar? I mean, they're two little girls. They're obviously wealthy. You can see by their dress compared to like the boys of 108th Street. It's a stage portrait. Somebody wanted a portrait of their daughters. What do we think about this? Well, I think it's interesting. They're twins, but they don't look identical not exactly and a lot of it comes it's interesting one twin has eyelashes and purple lips and the other has very full red lips i do not know why she did that you know yeah it's very very the dress is much shorter i'm sorry one's dress is much shorter well it's just pushed up i think revealing you know? yeah. and um just showing their character, I guess. Yeah, I also think it's brilliant what she did, that red and that purple cabinet behind them. Yeah. I think it's brilliant. Her choices of color here are incredible. But I have to say, 
these two, these twins scare me to death. <laughs> I think they're really scary. Like if I had twins and I had this commissioned a portrait, um, I think whoever the parents were must have been very, very, I'm saying in a good way, out there, because this is not a traditional portrait. Lisa, shining, right? the, the signature in the bottom and the date, that doesn't look like Neil. What is that? S-V-E. I can't see it because, my, wait, hold on one sec. Down by the leg of the... Yeah, I see it, but there's some screen in the way. Because usually she sort of has that long kind of vertical um, um, signature, like on a slam. Yeah, but it doesn't look anything like hers. I, I was oh, it says Neil. It's Neil. If you see the Wait, whole thing, it's like Neil. Can, you can see it says Neil? Yeah, N-E-E-L. It's vertical. 75. Mm -hmm. I only see the 75. Yeah. For that looks like an SV, but that, is that an N then? It's no, no, if you, if if you -E make the photograph on the left, Lisa's photograph, uh, you can see that it says, uh, it's Neil. Okay. You can move your box around if you just yeah. click it and drag it to see. Yeah. Let me see. Oh yeah, that's Neil. Okay. Right? It does look like an SV. It looks like it's backwards to me. Yeah. That Maybe that's what it is. Maybe this is the shining. <laughs> Very possible. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? Whoops. Okay, we just moved on. That's okay, Jason. Let's move to that one. This is Hartley and Jenny painted. Hey, Lisa, I'm sorry. I have to sign off. All right, Thank you so much. All right. See you. Yep. Okay. This is Hartley and Jenny, her son, and a girlfriend, a sister, I don't know. But let's take a look at this. It's like a finished, unfinished painting. But it seems to be finished. I mean, do you find this too sketchy? It doesn't bother me. <laughs> hmm? It doesn't bother me. It has the essence in it. His face is almost only drawn in. Except a light color in the eyes. And her... Look at her eyes. She's total. I mean, they're outrageous. Okay. And it's so interesting. His face has very little color except the gray shadows under the eyes that look like they were applied very quickly. And then she chooses blue for Ginny. And I'll show you something else that keeps it from being really kind of terrifying. The yellow clothes they're wearing. If you imagine them in all in like a dark gray, you have a completely different mood. And the fact that Hartley's knee is going, leg and knee is going across, almost matching the colors of her face, I find it much more friendly. But it's not a, fam a friendly painting by any means. Notice again how extraordinary the rendering is in Ginny's hand over the shoulder and compare it to Hartley's um, hand that's holding his chin, which is very rapid and almost sketch-like, but she still gets it. She, she, she knows what she's doing with her anatomy. They look like lost, you know, the lost children to me, so to speak. Okay, we can move on to the next one then. Okay, this I had to put in. Okay. Uh, again, along with like that Riverside Drive sunset, she did something like this because she had many animals and she loved them. So it, it's a very strange combination of, of subjects and things. This is called My Animals and Family and it was painted in 1974. Can you believe this is her? <laughs> She's so talented, she can do anything. I know, but I feel yeah. she's so much more amateur. In this picture, yes. But I think she did it on purpose. I think she does it on purpose. She's, she's too talented. 
<laughs> you might be right, Doris. You might be right. I mean, it's almost like a primitive painting. Yeah. But look at the expression on the wolf's eye. I know. <laughs> Two colored eyes. It's not the eyes. I mean, it's always the important. The eyes are so important. Yes. And in this, they're also important. Very much so. You, you go right to the eyes. Yep. Yep. And I wonder also, you may be right, Doris, look at that elongated body. It's really off. <laughs> You know, and his paws dangling in front. You know, it's like she knows better than that, right? That's what makes you think she does this on purpose. She's trying I, to relate some, you, you don't think so? I, I don't know. I don't know if she was just relaxing and playing around, but she's so dexterous. Why would she do this on purpose, though? I don't know. I don't know. Really understand. I don't care for this painting at all. Do any of you? That's <laughs> true. But I like the colors. Yeah. Maybe it was the preliminary for doing a little red riding hood. <laughs> I don't know. To me, there's Cezanne colors. If you're familiar with Paul Cezanne's work, the beige is, I love the rock below his haunch. I love that shape and the color. And then you go over here with like, you know, to the leaves, they're sort of like tropical leaves. And she never was in the tropics. But anyway, <laughs> just guess, okay? We can move on to the next one then. Okay, another pregnant one, okay? She's looking very, very startled, okay? And this is, I do believe it is, where did it go? Um, pregnant, why can't I see today? Um, this is pregnant Maria, okay? Yeah. This was done in 1964, so we're going back in time. What do we think? She has, she has three views. I'm sorry? There are three views of this woman. Yes. Small. Mm -hmm. I guess in the mirror and then the main one. Yes, yes. And if you're looking at the main one, again, she's sparing nothing. Look at her, her face to me looks rather childlike. She has those huge, huge eyes. Yeah. I mean, if you crop the rest of her, but obviously the subject is very, very young, okay? Notice the nipples, how pronounced they are, and really identifiable, right? I mean, color everything. Go down to her legs, and we've got the foreshortening, the legs falling into shadow. Now, what makes this doubly awkward, if we consider this awkward, is she's sitting on that little sort of ottoman, right? It's like a boudoir chair. All right. What, what was that? It's like a boudoir chair. Yeah. I, and again, I cannot imagine that being remotely comfortable for a heavily pregnant woman. So I find this whole picture very, very odd. When you look at the composition in the background, you see the corner where the uh, wall meets the floor. You know, on your left, right? I don't know if you can, do you see what I mean? Anyway. Stripping. I, her intention is to make this portrait. She, this is on purpose. She's, she, in the first place, she's audacious. Most people, very few paint. She knew, she yeah. knows what she's doing. She's purposely setting out to, sh to shock people, if you want to say that. And she purposely makes this girl, ex you know, extremely exaggeratedly, uh, I don't want to say ugly, but it seems she tries to make her look not, not beautiful. She's, she's not making anyone say how beautiful pregnancy is. That is not her objective. I, I think... She looks, the image looks childlike 
in the uh, frontal view, in the mirror, the reflection, she looks much older, I think. Very unfinished. Very, very unfinished. I don't think there's any symbolism involved in there or not. I never read anything about it, but um, nonetheless, yes, it isn't all, I mean, she looks like she's going to have a baby right after this posing, yes. right? Yes. But I also find something very, very interesting in the composition behind her. Even though, I mean, there's a mirror, I find it very claustrophobic. I don't know where she is. You know, there's that weird- in, in, the, in the mirror image, she really does look significantly older. She does. It's a good point. I'm not sure why. But again, the portrait itself, like it's odd, the positioning of the mirror going down into the corner of the wall. Um, it's an odd location and I find it very confining. Mm -hmm. Like this woman needs much more room. Do you know what I mean? It's windowless. I don't know. I find it kind of suffocating myself. Well, if you follow the line on the floor and to the where the mirror is, it doesn't go in a straight line, actually. Or either. The perspective is not correct at all. Right, right. Yeah. Stuck that mirror in there. But it... It's a, I mean, it's such a haunting painting. I, it doesn't bother me that there's stuff quote wrong, you know? No, no, I don't mean that. I, I don't think any of it's wrong. I think it's all intentional. She's too good. Yeah, exactly. You're right. You're right. Now it's very interesting here. If you notice her legs, you can see a modeling of skin. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure she had some kind of skin condition. Again, she's too deliberate. She's not being impressionistic. You know what I mean? Something was going on there. Okay. Now, again, right now in this time of schools of art, particularly in America, we've left some of the school, you know, the commitment of abstract expressionism. And now pop art is extremely popular as we go into the 70s and stuff. You will not see her. She does not compromise. You know, she's so committed. I want to show you one more thing before we move. Look at her belly. Look at that slight shouting. It's like a purplish gray. I think it's her right side. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's extraordinary. So swollen. I love it. Okay, let's move on. Yes, what is is what media is that one? Always oil. Always oil, but it's dripping on the right side it, there. You know, you can water down your oil, uh, oil paint with linseed oil or turps. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you can. can wipe it away too. Yeah, yeah. You and didn't. it's very spontaneous. You know, everything else is very contained. Um, it's not like her, so to speak, but I like it. Okay, Hartley, her son. Lisa, again. I'll be I'll be right back. Okay. Jason, here's Hartley um, in 1971. He's quite what I read is he's quite the New York hipster, don't you think? Oh, good looking. Yeah. What's that? He's good looking. Very good looking. Very, very, very good looking. Um, one second, I just want to read something about him. Thank you for a second. We have to really concentrate on the various states of dress, okay? I mean, there he is in his, his jeans and his t-shirt, um, you know, and also body language is so important in her portraits. What are you guys reading here? What do you think about him? No comments? Well, I think he's very relaxed. Mm -hmm. Very. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mind um, sitting for her portraits. No, I mean he obviously grew up in a, an artistic background, and that was just done. And you know, Alice Neal would just grab just about anybody, and you know, he was willing. I do not know if he was an artist himself. His face is very, very interesting. I do find it somewhat haughty. I mean, he's really good looking, but there's sort of an arrogance to it, do you think? Mm -hmm. 
And he's getting older. <laughs> yes. Notice the green along his jawline. And there is a glint in his eyes in this particular portrait. Mm -hmm. Do we think he's a pleasant looking person? Do you, what do you, what's the read of him that she shows us from what she shows us of him? I, I had the feeling that it's more passive. He's sort of watching the world go by yet making his own observations. Yeah. Uh, and and, and the, the contributions may be somewhat muted. I mean, that's that, that I, I sort of read that in his personality. Hmm. Interesting. I'll point out one other thing. Look at the hand that's kind of in his lap. Very unfinished outline. It's like a blue gray. You can see, you know, the, the digits and it's unfinished, but it is so finished. Extraordinary. I'll show you one other thing that's very interesting. Linda mentioned the black outline. Look at the cushions that he's sitting on. Black and minimal. And that's a very brilliant decision. If she had added color, yeah, it would, it would look so entirely different. You are drawn into Hartley and Hartley only, even though there's this background there. But it's almost like there's so much color and activity going on in this portrait that you need those pillows to be white. It's kind of, um, you know who used to love to do this? Uh, Vincent van Gogh, believe it or not. He, and he was influenced by Asian art where areas were outlined with black. So you have a little art history going on there. I love this. Okay, can we move on to our next, please? Uh, just one more thing. Her signature is the same as the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does look like that. Uh, that is her signature. Very good. And it's also very interesting. All right, onto this one. I'll just say, um, you rarely see vertical signatures by American artists or European artists. Right. Okay. This it's one I had to put in because this is, um, what's her name? Benny and Judy, okay? Both prominent artists, Benny Andrews, 1975. And I put this in, for, first of all, I love it. But secondly, I studied under him. He just recently died. He was a good painter. Look how out of it they look. Don't you think? Well, he in particular. And I find with his wife, Judy, there's something almost cubist about her face in coloring and arrangement. So I'd like to hear your thoughts about this. Nobody? I think that in her portraits, not she captures people that usually often you see when say sergeant, the person that's in the portrait or in photographs, they're looking at the camera. Mm -hmm. She just gets people the way they are. Yeah. And, and that's what makes her portraits so unique, wonderful. Profound. Besides yeah. she's, her, her use of color is just spectacular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now it's also interesting. I'm, you remember how I said that um, she was also along with her painted painting um, involved with uh, government projects and all of that kind of stuff. Um, she, you know, the common people and all. Um, again, she loved those they lived in Harlem and the uh, uh, village. I must say though, she was an early feminist. I did not mention that. And her social realism was meant to communicate socioeconomic unfairness. Not particularly in this one, but you, when you think about it in the others, okay? You know, like the boys of 108th Street or the little Puerto Rican boys. I mean, you do see privilege and not privilege, so to speak, but she loved them all, all right? Now- well, she uh, said, You said she's a feminist. She's clearly a feminist. That's why yes. Yes. she does the nude women, the uh, nude yes. pregnant women, that's her her statement. I mean- yeah, she's Not afraid. She was also an ardent communist throughout her whole uh -huh, life. Okay. Which kind of makes sense. It, it does, you know, everybody's the same, you know, whatever, you know. Did but, she sell um, much in her lifetime? Towards the end of her life, and she's selling gangbusters, of course, now. 
this this show at the Met blew her out of the water. That's what I thought. That's what mm -hmm. I, I mean. It's not. I certainly haven't heard of everybody by far, but I do interested in art, as you know. And I had never, I had never heard of her, and that was my fault. But here, the Met gives her this huge show. Um, they brought her out along. I mean, there's certain women painters at that time. There was another woman named Is Isabel Bishop. And, um, you know, they found her. I mean, she did enjoy success towards the end of her life. And so she was pretty prominent in the artist society. She just had a long, and it's never like she was starving or anything, you know? Do you like, think this is partly a feminine, uh, you know, like a, they're, do, they're bringing women artists out who hadn't, they had, you know, pushed the way women were pushed aside. You think that has some aspect of it? Absolutely. I mean, when you think about it, you know, in everything, any kind of exhibit, magazines, everything, they really are pushing, you know, black and brown people of color or, or people, you know, who don't, I mean, it, these are not at all, like when you think of John Singer Sargent por portraits, this is right. another planet. Right. And they're trying, yes, I think there, this was done for a reason. Okay, let's move on to another, please. Whoops, Jason's on. Okay, whoops. Yes. Next. Oh no. I'm sorry, Jason. There we go. Okay, can you all see it? Yes. This is a self portrait when she was 80 years old. Yeah. Again. No modesty, no shame. Yeah. She's just there, so to speak. And you can see she's got a paintbrush in her hand and she's holding a painter's rag. Look at all the color in her face. And you do, you see that green, that shade of oil paint um, repeated, okay? in a lot of her portraits, which is really, a ch I mean, she makes it work because nobody puts green in her portraits really, you know? Let's talk about the background here a little. Um, she's got that diagonal shape, which is like, quote, a real no-no in the art, you know, art. You just never have sharp diagonals bisecting your, your canvases, but at the same time, if you notice, she's introducing that kind of burnt umber kind of color, no, or like a sepia, okay? What do we think of her color choices for the background, first of all, where she's seated? Anybody? And the way they're positioned. Oh, I was gonna say they're all surprising. It, it yes. always is a surprise, the color she chooses. I not, don't really love it to me, it's like a 50s different. color scheme. Yeah. It's, I love the couch. I love her. Notice the old hand here. Okay. Um, wait, let me just move this for one second so we can go into her face. Okay. What does her face say to you? It's like, uh, that's me, uh, ta uh, take it or leave it. Th that's my statement. Yes, yes, she's challenging you, I feel. The other thing that I see in her face, I mean, rural Pennsylvania, no matter how, quote, checkered her life was, I still see a country girl in her face. You know? despite the Andy Warhol and the factory and losing a child and then never seeing a child again and you know numerous lovers and chaos and all that kind of stuff. I, I see something of, um, it's not Western, but there's still a country girl look in her face. I don't know. Well, those country girls don't give a damn. I'm sorry, what? I think those country girls just don't give a damn. Good for them. <laughs> I, don't know that um, I, don't I mean, know. she's saying, "I've lived my. This is this is me." I, it's Herb said, "She's lived her life, and yeah." Be, wait, if you crop her body with her hand and just look at her face, I, I'd expect to see her in a black business suit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
cross dressing. But if you look just at her face, hold your hand up to the slide, uh, the uh, visual, she could be anybody's grandmother. Yeah. I think that's so fantastic. And it the kills me. red that she uses on her on the cheeks and the green. Oh yeah. Very surprising. Yeah. They're complementary colors. If anybody taking classes with me, it's opposite colors of the color wheel. And when you mix red and green together, certain shades, you can get beautiful qualities and shadows. Otherwise, you get Christmas colors. She did not mix her, you know, there's other colors. The green, the red is dominant. The green, it's not a pure like Christmas green. She experimented with greens and her colors to get that because those two colors together can be really awful. Okay. Any other thoughts on this? Okay. I just. She, she did off. sign her name, not vertically. Sorry? Her name is signed from side to side, not up and down. All right. Towards the end of her Very life. Good. Interesting. Okay. Okay, let me just read to you um, a little about how her life continued. Um, so here she is depicting herself at 80 years old. And, you know, she, an art critic said, the striped chair is very, very deliberate because it really enhances her bulging skin, which is an interesting point, you know? Because, you know, it's true, because if that were like a pinkish lounge chair or light blue, she would just blend in. Nothing is fair here, right? What a character. Okay, again, in this picture, she doesn't care about her dignity. She's blunt and to the point, but she also, it's true, she kind of has a sense of humor here, don't you think? Yeah, look at me. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. busting all over. <laughs> June is busting out all over. <laughs> it's very humorous in a way when you think about it. Notice this though, from the tight realism to her face, so to speak, down to these very unfinished flat feet, which you can you get them. Fallen arches, whatever. You know? Right foot is very vague. I'm sorry? The right foot is very vague, the way it's drawn. Yes. Okay, let's, I'm sorry. We can move on to the next one. I love, this is one of my favorites. I just, it's, it's very, very interesting. Okay, who are they? They are, wait, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, my list is a little scrambled. Um, one of them, I'm sorry guys, just give me a second. Um, I will find them in one minute. Excuse me. Where is my list? Is oh, Jeffrey Hendricks and Brian, 1978. One of them was a writer. Okay, I think you obviously can tell they're lovers. You know, um, he is almost very straight laced and you know preppy looking, so to speak. Right? Mm -hmm. Look at this dude. <laughs> Look at those eyes. This guy, I feel, I shouldn't call him a guy. This person has seen a lot in his life, I feel, unlike Jeff. Okay? Who's protecting who? Who is the powerful one in the relationship? Notice the unbuttoned shirt with a little roll of skin, very hairy chest. What, what's your take on this, guys? What do you all think? Any thoughts? Well, they're very detailed, very detailed and drawn. Yes. And painted. Yes. And my other thought is the fruit looks a little bit um, old. Oh, I think the fruit is kind of like, why is it there? Walk it out with your hand. Oh, that's the question. It's really interesting. I mean, it's such a separate thing. Is that a zucchini or a? Um, 
But again, I think it, these are, I love this. I just love this. I love his face so much. You know exactly what he's about. Wildly gay, the one on the left. Oh yeah, I think they're partners. And um, he's very, very decadent looking and his eyes are very haunted. And as I said, this man is very, very preppy. He's got a blue striped shirt that, you know, everything is buttoned. He's got his little, you know, it's two different people pulling together. Okay. Where she found them, I don't know. Notice this is also very interesting. <clears throat> you see this time she did her black line here around him, but he, his hands are blue. Okay. I also feel, I don't know if you agree with me. I feel what's his name again? Um, Brian has clearly got the power. What do you all think? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, again, beautiful colors. I mean, look at that green against the red. It really, really works. Most people would be terrified to do that. Okay. Look at this hand. I mean, she's ex was extraordinary. I'm referring her to her in the um, present, but well, she's sort of with us now because of the exhibit. There's only three. It ends the 28th, everybody, if anybody wants to go in. All right, can we go to, is there another image? I'm not sure. Oh, I love this one. This is at the end of her life. Um, again, it's very interesting because I put this in because uh, Robert May Maplethorpe photographed her. I don't know if any of you know who he was. He was an extremely controversial photographer, incredibly, incredibly talented, very, very graphic, gay life, okay? Um, I mean, a lot of people were really like, wouldn't show his work, certain galleries wouldn't. Um, the fact that she knew him, this is, you know, at the end of her life, you know, she had a lot of her person. I mean, she had a kind of quirky, kinky side. She had a love of family side. She loved politics, you know, she's a very, she was a very interesting woman. And you think coming and like, how did she get here from that small town, you know? Jason, this is our last visual, yes? Correct. Okay. Let me just finish out by just talking a, a little bit about her thoughts, okay? Um, <clears throat> again, as I mentioned this before, she could make anybody, there, anybody's, um, um, whether they were awkward or anxious or scarred or whatever, she made people seem at home. Nobody seemed particularly uncomfortable in any of the portraits from Andy Warhol to the pregnant women, okay? Um, she once said, I do not do realism. To her, a room, a chair, and a person were all the same. Wow. Which I think is very, very interesting. And it really surprised me. Oh, except then she goes on to say, whoops, I'm sorry, I forgot about the important part except that the person is human and therefore essentially psychological. That's where we go back into the thing about, I don't want to see my face here. <laughs> Let me go to gallery. Um, okay. We talk about um, psychic depth, okay? You know, she, she creates that with her subject. Now, again, as I said, she didn't receive significant recognition until the 70s. Now, she was started painting in the... 3040s. Not much, but she did. She had her first retrospective at the Whitney in 74, that kind of brought her on the map. She was elected to the American Academy and Institutes and Arts of Letters in 76. Then she was in um, the Women's Caucus for Art Show and recognized her outstanding achievements in her visual arts. So that's her story. She's pretty, was pretty extraordinary and very, very complicated, okay? She doesn't paint a pretty picture necessarily. <laughs> I, I, I wonder if part of the fact that she, we hadn't, I hadn't heard of her, 
is that, as you said, abstract expressionism was so popular yep. at that time that anybody was, uh, not that she was exactly a realist, but she was a figurative painter. Yes. It was just not, not shown. I mean, we're thinking about the stars like de Kooning and all of them. I mean, yeah. this work was not shown. And I love her sense of commitment. She didn't care. I, I, I think it's, I mean, she was so true to herself. She didn't alter anything from the very beginning. Any other comments before we start wrapping this up? About that daughter that her husband took the daughter and left. Yeah. Did she ever see him like her again or have the contact? Oh, her, I believe, here we go two to three times in her entire life. Um, Did she live in Cuba? I'm sorry? Did she live in Cuba with him? She did live in Cuba when they were married, when oh. she had her first child who died, okay? Then they went on to have another one, Isabetta, and he left her with Lisbetta. Oh, and, okay. and they were living in New York then. I'm sorry? They, she and her husband were living in New York. Started off in New York, but yeah. he, he didn't stay in the country. I think he went off to Paris for a while. I mean, it was hard. It was yeah. very, very hard. And again, you see her love of family and children, whether they're strange or not, they're very, very, people are just so important. Can you imagine losing a child like that? Plus having one die. Right. So her life was not easy. And the men she chose were not terrific, sadly. I mean, they, you know, somebody threw, one abandoned her, uh, kind of threw little through her work, you know, years of work got destroyed in a, that a fire he set to. So, um, but I really admire her because she really persevered and she really created beautiful art. Herb, were you gonna say something? No, it's obvious that she, she, she was her own person with a, a determined personality uh, 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 come what may as you are you really uh, dedicated to art and that was her that was her milieu it period <laughs> <laughs> but she had a lot of challenges i mean everybody has challenges in her life but hers were so extreme so extreme so um anybody other have any other comments before I sign off or does anybody want to quick see a picture that they loved or anything like that? We're finishing up a little bit early, but next week we are doing um Grant Wood, you know, American Gothic. So different. So so different. I think well, I want to say a big thank you, Lisa. This was a terrific lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Doris. It's great to see you again. You too. I'll email you, as a matter of fact, which I will do today. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for coming. Jason, thank you. Help. Thank you. Okay. See you next Tuesday, hopefully.